Good morning. We're, uh, we're glad that you could make it. Um, my name is Daniel Peterson. I'm a professor of Islamic studies and Arabic at BYU. Um, and uh, thanks to the charity and poor judgment of some of my colleagues, I'm also the president and chairman of the Interpreter Foundation. Um, on behalf of the foundation, I'd like to welcome you to this, which is the, the second Interpreter Science and Mormonism Symposium, which is subtitled Body, Brain, Mind, and Spirit, which covers a lot. Um, excuse me. The, uh, the first Interpretive Science and Mormonism Symposium was held on the 9th of November 2013. So we've been a while getting the second one going. And it had a focus on the topics of cosmos, earth, and man. I'm pleased to say that, uh, that an expanded version of the proceedings of that conference is coming off the press. I think, um, I think there are at least two copies circulating here. It's not available for sale yet, I don't think, but, uh, but there's one I know. Jeff has one there on the back, uh, um, holding it up. <laughs> this is a uh, paperback, a soft um, prototype. It's not quite as nice as the hardback. It's going to be a It's beautifully illustrated. I think you'll, you'll like it. Um, well, let me explain to you very briefly what the Interpretive Foundation is, and I would like to... Uh, I'm going to read this. I don't typically read talks. I don't typically prepare talks, but, uh, but I've, um, I've got some things written out here in order to get in what I wanted to say and do it more or less coherently. Um, let me explain what the Interpretive Foundation is. This is my chance to propagandize you. Uh, established late in the summer of 2012, the Foundation is a non-profit educational organization focused on the scriptures of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which include, of course, the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price, the Bible, the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, also early LDS history and related subjects. All the publications in its journal, which is online, Interpreter, Journal of Mormon Scripture, are peer-reviewed and are made available as free internet downloads or through at-cost print-on-demand services. Our first article went up nine days after we decided to organize the new foundation. We've now published at least one article every Friday for 190 consecutive weeks, which we hadn't expected to do. <laughs> We, uh, we thought, well, let's publish an article every week for the first few weeks to kind of make a, establish a presence. And then I think we really established a monster um, so that now if we ever were to miss a week, we'd be in serious trouble and people would say, ha ha, we knew they'd fail. So we've got to keep it going. Um, all right, we've also published six books. We've posted 160 video recorded scripture roundtables that are key to the adult Sunday school curriculum of the church. And there are other posts on the website, such as our blog and and resources for students and teachers that are not necessarily peer-reviewed, but are approved prior to posting by Interpreter's Executive Board. Um, our goal is to increase understanding of Scripture through careful scholarly investigation and analysis of the insights provided by a wide range of ancillary disciplines, including language, um, history, archaeology, literature, culture, ethno-history, art, geography, law, politics, philosophy, and so on. Interpreter also publishes articles advocating the authenticity and historicity of LDS scripture and the Restoration, along with scholarly responses to critics of the LDS faith and of theism in general. Uh, we hope to illuminate by study and faith the eternal spiritual message of the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Although the board fully uh, supports the goals and teachings of the church, the Interpretive Foundation is an independent entity and is not owned, controlled by, or affiliated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or with Brigham Young University, though some of us, myself included, teach there. All research and opinions provided on its website, its publications, and its conferences are the sole responsibility of their respective authors and should not be interpreted as the opinions of the board nor as official statements of LDS doctrine, belief, or practice. In my case, they shouldn't necessarily even be interpreted as my own opinions more than a week later. Um, <laughs> but they were my opinion, at least briefly. Um, so. The Foundation is, with a few exceptions where professional services are required, a volunteer organization. Neither authors nor roundtable discussants nor members of the Foundation's board are paid for their services. Yet for all this, there are expenses. We rely on the generosity of donors to enable us to organize conferences such as this with free admission and to make our publications available at or near cost. Our goal is to get our materials out there as widely and easily accessibly, uh, accessible as we can. Now, uh, permit me for just a minute to, to shift gears and to change tone and topics very, very seriously. Um, 
We at the Interpreter Foundation were deeply saddened only a few days ago to learn of the unexpected passing of our dear colleague, the Catholic philosopher and theologian Stephen H. Webb, on Saturday, the 5th of March, 2016, a week ago today. Among other things, we had been looking forward to spending time with him this coming weekend, or th this weekend, rather. He was scheduled to speak at this symposium. Christians don't talk enough about depression, Stephen wrote for the website of the superb magazine First Things on the 19th of February, 2016, slightly more than two weeks before his death. Emotional pain, for one thing, can be hard to share. Despair can feel very physical for the sufferer, weighing heavily on the heart and clogging the brain, but its surface features can be easily overlooked or missed altogether. A depression that finally lifts leaves no scars on the skin to show how deep the wound was and how long the healing took. Besides, such anguish is so personal that it's hard to share it with anyone other than members of the family or the medical profession. It was, so far as I'm aware, his final publication. Steve graduated summa cum laude from Wabash College and then received his doctorate with distinction from the University of Chicago. He taught religion and philosophy at Wabash for 25 years. Recently, he'd been teaching at the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis and serving in several prison ministries. He wrote over a dozen academic books on theological aspects of topics ranging from rhetoric to gift giving, from vegetarianism to Bob Dylan, most of them published by Oxford University Press as well as hundreds of essays, articles, book reviews, book chapters, and web pieces. In the past few years, notes his obituary in the Indianapolis Star, he truly enjoyed his connections to the wonderful people of the LDS community, and that enjoyment was heartily reciprocated, and not merely because we were astonished to be treated with such unaccustomed respect by a thoughtful believer outside of our own tradition. Steve was a warm friend of the Latter-day Saints, both intellectually and personally, his books, Mormon Christianity, What Other Christians Can Learn from the Latter-day Saints, that was Oxford 2013, and Catholic and Mormon, A Theological Conversation, Oxford 2015, written with Alonzo Gaskell, have been very well received among Latter-day Saint readers who are delighted to find that their author was also a wonderful human being. In his remarks on why Mormon materialism matters, delivered at the August 2015 Fair Mormon Conference, are available online as is his article in BYU Studies entitled God Bodied the Matter of the Latter-day Saints. Also online is a video of his remarkable discussion with Margaret Barker at the Interpretive Foundation's August 2015 birthday party, which I was privileged to moderate. We had hoped and expected to hear much more from Steve. More importantly, though, as humans and as his friends, we're heartsick at this terrible loss. We pray that God's comfort and blessing will rest upon his wife, Diane Timmerman, and their five children, upon his parents, and upon the many others who knew and loved him. And we look forward to the day when God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, again, changing tone dramatically, there are some practical matters that I have to share with you. Um, I want to say that uh, videos of this conference will, we hope, if all things go well, uh, eventually be up on the interpreter website for you to refresh your memory. Um, uh, as far as food goes for lunch, there are two food venues on campus. There's a Taco Bell and a Subway sandwich, um, but neither is in this building. Um, I don't think they're particularly near. Uh, so for lunch, there are a number of restaurants east of here on the University Parkway. Um, I've already mentioned that donations are very much appreciated. I sometimes feel like a television evangelist. Um, <laughs> but the fact is, operations like this run on money, they do. And so donations are very much appreciated, in case you haven't heard that before. There are slips and envelopes that are available during the break, I think, out on one of the tables out there, if you feel like it. But we're not passing the plate. You don't have to do it. But anyway, if you feel inclined, do. Um, and Eborn Books has a display out there with a number of their publications including, I haven't looked carefully, but including, I believe, the ones we've published with them so far. Um, okay, is there anything else we need to say? There will be a dinner tonight, uh, very informal and at your own expense. <laughs> we are a poor and lean operation. Um, but some of us will be gathering at the Brick Oven restaurant in, uh, in Provo back at the, uh, the, the southwestern corner of BYU down below the campus. Uh, for a dinner, just if you want to get together and talk informally. We have a room reserved there that has capacity for about 35, I think. So if you want to be there, I think there's a sign-up sheet uh, out there again on the table. So anyway, I, I'm really grateful that you're here. Uh, this is 
This is the kind of thing where I wake up on a morning before a conference like this and think, will there be anybody there? And so I was delighted when I saw people coming in that, uh, that I wouldn't be alone and that I wouldn't be embarrassed uh, <laughs> because I've been there. Um, but, but I'm grateful for your presence here and I think you'll be richly rewarded for being here. And um, let's see, I believe the time is now yours, Jamie Radabaugh, to introduce our keynote speaker whom we are very honored to have with us today. We're grateful that he could come. Thank you.